The second law of thermodynamics explains why no heat engine can be 100% efficient. And if that is so, then what is the maximum theoretical efficiency attainable for heat engines? This question was answered by a French engineer in 1824. And his name is Sadi Carnot. So, ito siya. Lagi siyang malungkot kasi Sadi. <laughs> okay. So, this is Sadi Carnot. And in his paper, he described a theoretical engine which we now call a Carnot engine. So, this Carnot engine is a theoretical engine that operates in an ideal and reversible cycle called the Carnot cycle. So, considering the Carnot engine, it's just a theoretical engine, meaning it can never be realized. Why? Because it operates in an ideal reversible cycle. And we know that all processes in nature are irreversible. That is why a Carnot engine can never be realized. And because Carnot engine operates in an ideal reversible cycle, then Carnot engine is also the most efficient engine. Again, this is because it operates in a reversible cycle. The limited efficiency of all heat engines is due to the fact that they operate in irreversible processes. And to describe how the Carnot engine works, this is a simplified diagram. Here, we have an ideal gas that is confined in a cylinder. Of course, we have a piston. The ideal gas which serves as the working substance is in contact with the hot reservoir, which is at a temperature TH. Because of that, the gas will absorb energy in the form of heat which will cause it to expand isothermally. So the first process is an isothermal expansion, meaning it will expand without a change in temperature. So at the end of the process, the temperature of the gas is still TH. But we know that when an ideal gas undergoes an isothermal process, delta U is equal to zero. And because of that, the first law of thermodynamics tells us that Q is equal to W. Therefore, in the expansion process, the gas will do a certain amount of work which is equal to the amount of heat absorbed. So in the process A to B, the amount of work done is also equal to this QH. After the isothermal expansion, the gas will expand adiabatically. However, for that to happen, this boundary will have to be replaced by a thermal insulator. In letter B, this portion here is an insulator. Why? Because we know that for an adiabatic process to happen, dapat hindi magkaroon ng heat absorption or heat loss. Okay, so to ensure that will happen, dapat ito ay isang insulator. The gas will expand adiabatically, meaning Q will be equal to zero. In the process B to C, the expansion is adiabatic and Q is equal to zero. But still, the gas will do a certain amount of work in pushing this piston up. Okay, so may makukuha tayo dyan na work na B to C. And that is the work done in the adiabatic expansion. However, at the end of the adiabatic expansion, what will happen to the temperature of the gas? Kung ang gas ay nag-expand adiabatically, ano ang nangyayari sa temperature? Di ba bumababa? Yes! So at the end of the adiabatic expansion process, the temperature of the gas will decrease. After that, the gas will be compressed. And the compression is an isothermal process. If we will compress the gas isothermally, its volume will decrease. However, its temperature will not change. We can also apply this formula that delta U is equal to zero. And the amount of work done will be equal to the amount of heat that will be transferred. So in the compression process, this gas will expel certain amount of heat out okay and that heat is qc this is the amount of heat that will be expelled to the lower reservoir so kung gaano kalaki yung qc na ito ganoon din kalaki yung work done dito sa process na ito so lagay natin dito this is qh and dito naman ilagay natin ito ay qc 
after the isothermal compression, the gas will further undergo another compression process. This time, an adiabatic compression. Ayan. Kung adiabatic ang compression, again, ang Q ay equal sa zero. However, the work done is not equal to zero. No? Dito sa process uh, D to A, meron tayong compute na work, which is equal to, lagay natin dito, the work done from D to A. Yan yung work done in the adiabatic compression. Furthermore, anong mangyayari kapag ka ang gas ay nag-compress adiabatically? Di ba nagbabago yung temperature niya? Kanina sa adiabatic expansion, bumaba yung temperature. no? Naging equal na siya sa TC. Pero ngayon, nung kinompress mo siya adiabatically, what do we expect? We will expect that the temperature of this gas will increase. Yes, that is what will happen. It will increase and return to its original temperature TH. To further explain to you how Carnot cycle works, let me give you the PV diagram for the cycle. Okay, so here we have four processes. What are the four processes that make up the Carnot cycle? Again, we have isothermal expansion and then adiabatic expansion, isothermal compression, and after that, adiabatic compression. So, tatandaan ha, dalawang expansion, dalawang compression. Okay, lagay natin dito. Dalawang expansion and dalawang compression. So, lagi yung magkasunod yung dalawang expansion. Expansion, expansion, compression, compression. At alternating naman yung isothermal and adiabatic. So, hindi pwede na isothermal, isothermal, adiabatic, adiabatic. No. Alternating lagi. So, adiabatic, isothermal, adiabatic, isothermal. O kung gusto mo naman, isothermal, adiabatic, isothermal, adiabatic. Whichever. Ano? Basta alternating sila. I-describe ulit natin yung nangyayari doon sa Carnot engine. Okay? So, sa process A to B, mag-aabsorb ng heat yung gas from the hot reservoir. That heat is actually QH and it will cause the gas to expand isothermally, causing it to do a certain amount of work. And that work is also equal to QH. Why? Because delta U equals zero for an isothermal process involving an ideal gas. Now, from B to C, the gas will undergo adiabatic expansion. Ayan. Kung adiabatic expansion, alam natin ang Q ay equal sa zero. ba? However, in the expansion process, the gas will, will do a certain amount of work equal to WBC. Okay, now, aside from that, the temperature of the gas will drop. As a result of the adiabatic expansion from TH, its temperature will drop to TC. Okay, at point C, the gas will be in contact with the cold reservoir whose temperature is TC. And because of that, it will expel a certain amount of heat towards the colder temperature reservoir. So, that would be an isothermal process. The gas will undergo an isothermal compression and expel heat to the colder reservoir. In the compression process, meron ulit tayong work na mapuproduce. That work is equal to QC. Okay, bakit? Kasi nga po, isothermal yan. Ang delta yung ay zero. Therefore, the work done is equal to the heat transferred, which in this case is equal to QC. And the last process for the cycle is an adiabatic compression. Okay? So from D to C, compress ang gas adiabatically na magre-resulta sa pagtaas ng kanyang temperature. Ano? So from TC, its temperature will return to its initial temperature TH. O, di ba? Ang galing. Now, of course, in that compression process, meron ulit tayong work. Ano? So although in that process, Q is zero, the work is equal to WDA. Ano? Yun yung work mula dito hanggang doon. Okay? So, dito sa Carnot cycle na ito, mayroon tayong dalawang processes na nag involve ng heat transfer. Ano yun? Yung QA to B, which is equal to QH, and then yung Q from C to D, which is equal to QC. But in all of these processes, mayroon tayong compute na work. Diba? And now, we might be interested to know what is the net work done in the cycle. O, diba? Oo nga, ano? 
So kung kanina meron tayong dalawang expansion, ina-expect natin positive yan. At meron tayong dalawang compression, so ina-expect natin negative yan. ba? Diba? So what is the net work done? The net work done here is equal to the area which is enclosed in the PV diagram. ba? Diba? Meron tayo ditong closed curve. That closed curve, which is shaded in yellow, is the net work done by the Carno engine. So kung gusto mong malaman yan, eh di... I-add mo lang yung apat na work, no? Yung unang work, which is equal to QH. Yung pangalawang work, which is equal to WBC. The third work, which is equal to QC. And the last one, work, which is equal to WDA. And remember that Carno engine is the most efficient engine. Bakit? Because it operates in an ideal reversible cycle. So, tatandaan ha? Ano nga ulit yung apat na processes na nangyayari sa isang Carnot engine? Meron tayong dalawang compression at dalawang expansion, right? Dalawang isothermal at saka dalawang adiabatic. Okay, and all of them are reversible processes. Making the Carnot engine the most efficient engine. And because Carnot engine is the most efficient engine, we have to state that. Because there is a theorem that explicitly tells us that no engine can be more efficient than a Carnot engine. No, We call it the Carnot theorem no? or the Carnot theorem. According to this theorem, no real heat engine operating between two energy reservoirs can be more efficient than a Carnot engine operating between the same two reservoirs. Okay, so consider a Carnot engine. Tapos meron siyang dalawang reservoir operating at temperatures TH and TC. Now, I have a real heat engine, okay? a practical heat engine, which also operates in the same temperature, TH and TC. If both of them are operating in the same temperatures, TH and TC, then this cardio engine will always be more efficient than a practical engine. That's the theorem. Madali lang, ano? Walang real engine ang magiging mas efficient pa sa isang Carno engine. Okay? Tatandaang mabuti ha. Ngayon, baka naman pag bumili ka ng sasakyan, sabihin mo sa Toyota, dapat yung sasakyan mo ang makina ay Carno engine. Naku, patay ka, no? Hindi ka makakabili ng sasakyan na ang makina ay Carno engine. Bakit? Kasi nga, siya ay isang theoretical engine. No? <laughs> Again, it exists only in our imagination. So sir, bakit pa nauso ang concept ng Carnot engine at ng Carnot cycle? Eh, yan pala naman, eh, hindi pwedeng ma-realize. Ah, so the purpose of the Carnot engine is that it provides the limiting efficiency for practical heat engine. So if ever gagawa ka ng isang practical engine, yung maximum efficiency niya, ang magseset nun is yung Carnot engine. Siya ang nagseset ng ideal efficiency ng kahit na anong engines. So ngayon, gaano kalaki ang efficiency ng isang Carno engine? Ah, the thermal efficiency of a Carno engine is given by this formula. Okay, here we have the formula EC, no, which is the Carno efficiency equal to 1 minus TC over TH. We may recall in our previous discussion of heat engines that the, the efficiency of a heat engine is equal to 1 minus QC over QH. Diba? So yung Q doon, pinalitan lang natin dito ng T. Ano? TC over TH. And remember, these two temperatures must be in Kelvins. So what does this formula tell us? It tells us that the efficiency of a Carnot engine depends only on its operating temperatures. ba? Kasi wala ka namang ibang makikita ang parameter dito sa formula na ito eh. No? Yun lang TC at saka TH. Of course, yung one constant yan. ba? So yung efficiency ng Carnot engine nakadepende lang sa kanyang operating temperature. Yung TC at saka yung TH. Ngayon, tanong. Sir, possibly ba na ang Carnot engine magkaroon ng 100% na efficiency? Considering ideal engine yan ha, it is an ideal engine and it operates in a reversible cycle. Possibly ba na ang Carnot engine ay magkaroon ng 100% efficiency? Possibly ba? Isipin mo. <laughs> so kung titingnan natin ang formula, magiging 100% lang ang efficiency if this becomes 1, right? And that will happen only if this TC is 0. So that means, kung ang temperature ng cold reservoir ay 0 kelvins, 100% efficiency ito. Yes! Mathematically, that is correct. But, 
in reality, pwede ba natin na sabihin na yung temperature ng cold reserve ay zero? Di ba hindi? The absolute zero temperature has never been attained even experimentally. We have reached temperatures approaching to absolute zero but not exactly zero. And some of those temperatures are obtained for microscopic entities, no? sub-microscopic entities. But if we are talking about heat engines, this is something that is macroscopic. And kung consider natin ang practical na sitwasyon, the cold reservoir most likely would have a temperature which is equal to the room temperature, right? Yes. Kahit pa sabihin natin na yan ay uh, ideal, no? Kasi yan ay Carnot engine eh, 'di ba? Reversible yung cycle. Pero kung i-consider mo yung sitwasyon, kahit pa sabihin mong ideal yan, hindi naman pwede na yung cold reservoir mo 0 Kelvin ang temperature, 'di ba? Ano klaseng engine yan? That is why even for a Carnot engine, the efficiency will always be less than 100%. So, how much more? Yung mga tunay na, na heat engines, di ba? Now, let us solve some problems involving Carnot engine. First problem, a steam engine has a boiler that operates at 500 kelvins. The energy from the burning fuel changes water to steam. We all know that. Sa isang steam engine, yung tubig na kumukulo nagiging steam, di ba? And that steam drives the piston. And then, the cold reservoir's temperature is that of the outside air. Ayan, no? approximately 300 kelvins. What is the maximum thermal efficiency of this heat engine? Okay, so to solve this problem, balikan lang natin yung formula na Carnot efficiency. Diba? Ang Carnot efficiency ay equal sa 1 minus Tc over pH. The temperature of the cold reservoir is 300 Kelvin. So, 1 minus 300 divided by the temperature of the hot reservoir is 500 Kelvin. So, here we have 1 minus 300 over 500, right? So, this is 3 fifths. And uh, 3 fifths is equal to 0.6, right? This is 0.6. 1 minus 0.6, that's 0.4, diba? So, ang efficiency niyan ay di 40%. Okay, so di ba madali lang ang Carnot engine na dinidescribe sa problem na ito ay may efficiency na 40%. Ngayon, sir, sa totoong buhay, ano kaya ang pwedeng gawin para ang efficiency ng isang engine ay mapataas kasi parang ang liit ng efficiency niya? Ang pwede natin baguhin dito is yung TC at saka yung TH. ba? So kung gusto mo na ito ay mapataas, dapat pababain mo yung TC. Right? Pag pinababa mo yung TC, this quantity will decrease. And then 1 minus that quantity, magiging mas malaki yung efficiency natin. However, uh, hindi masyadong practical na paliitin yung TC. Bakit? Kasi impractical naman na lalagyan mo ng air condition ng unit or ng yelo ang makina para lang siya ay lumamig. Diba? <laughs> eh alam naman natin mainit yung makina. Okay? That's why normally itong TC na ito hindi lumalayo sa ambient temperature which is yung room temperature. Hindi siya lalayo doon. Na kung impractical pala na baguhin ang TC, ano na lang ang pwede? Eh di, tinan mo na lang dyan is yung TH. Yes. Anong pwede natin gawin sa TH para ang efficiency ay lumaki? Ah! Kung gusto natin na ito ay lumaki, dapat yung ima-minus mo sa 1 lumiit. Para ito ay lumiit, dapat palakihin natin yung denominator. Okay? So that is the more practical approach. We make the temperature of the hot reservoir as high as possible. Kaya nga, yung mga highly efficient engines, alibawa, yung mga rockets na nagsesend ng space shuttle sa outer space o yung nagdi-deliver ng mga supply sa International Space Station, ang kanilang temperature, yung operating temperature nila, mas mataas. ba? Para mas maging efficient yung engine nila. Okay? And of course, dahil nag-ooperate sila sa mas mataas na temperature, the materials that make up that rocket engine should be able to withstand extremely high temperatures. Okay? So, let us solve another problem. A Carnot heat engine receives 500 kilojoules of heat per cycle from a high temperature heat reservoir at 652 degrees Celsius. Okay, so from that statement, Itong 500 kilojoules of heat na ito, yan yung Q na galing sa hot reservoir. So we have QH equal to 500 kilojoules. And nabanggit niya na yung hot reservoir ay may temperature na 652 degrees Celsius. 
Siya daw ay nagre-reject ng heat papunta sa low temperature heat reservoir which is at 30 degrees Celsius. Ayan. Lagay natin dito yung TC, 30 degrees Celsius. Ito lagay natin ang H. Next, determine the thermal efficiency of the Carnot engine and letter B, the amount of heat reject to the low temperature heat reservoir. Ah, so dito itinatanong yung QC. And at the same time, yung efficiency. Ano? So, dalawa ang ating kukumputin. Efficiency and the heat expelled to the cold reservoir. Okay, let's solve the problem. Starting with the efficiency. We know that the efficiency is equal to 1 minus Tc over Th. And since because both of them are given, ito sila, makukumpute na agad natin ang efficiency. 1 minus, okay. So, dapat Kelvin yung temperature. So, 30 plus 273 divided by 652 plus 273. Okay? So, compute natin yan sa calculator. 1 minus fraction sign 30 plus 273 divided by 652 plus 273. So, this gives us an efficiency of Okay, so pag minultiply kayo ng 100, magiging 67.2%. 67.2%. Now, for letter B, ano daw yung amount ng heat na na-reject sa low temperature heat reservoir? So, ang itinatanong sa atin ay QC. Dahil alam na natin kung ano ang kanyang efficiency, malalaman na natin ngayon yung QC. Paano? Because we know that the efficiency is equal to 1 minus QC over QH. ba? Diba? Kasi galing yan sa heat engine eh. And essentially, the Carnot engine is a heat engine. Kaya yung TC over TH, pwede nating palitan ng QC over QH. So, if we manipulate this equation, ito ilipat ko sa kabila, no? at itong ilipat ko dito, magiging QC over QH equals 1 minus E. And after that, I multiply both sides by QH. Okay? So, QC is equal to 1 minus E multiplied by QH. Okay, now we substitute the values. 1 minus 0.672 times 500 kilojoules times 10 to the 3 equals. Ayan, meron tayong 164 kilojoules of heat. So therefore, QC is 164 kilojoules. That's it. So, now nasolve na natin yung problem, di ba? Marunong tayo mag-compute ng efficiency ng isang Carnot engine and alam na natin kung paano mag-operate ang isang Carnot engine. Ano? It operates in a reversible cycle called the Carnot cycle which is made up of four processes namely, isothermal expansion, adiabatic expansion, isothermal compression, and adiabatic compression. Okay? And always remember, A Carnot engine is the most efficient engine possible. That's the end of our topic for this video. Thank you for watching. Bye!